around some math stuff because I think maths is really cool and maths is where it's at. So these are some maths problems I've been working on. So this is the first one. Uh, I've been getting it right into graphs. So this is the first one. Um, this is a graph, it's a bar graph of the amount of ink left in my pen. Um, <laughs> starts off really high and then over time it's doesn't matter. The next one is a, um, it's also, it's a Venn diagram. I'm comparing how much time at work I spend doing work compared to how much time I just waste on my spirograph. Um, there's that one, it's a Venn diagram. Thank you. Uh, the next one's also a Venn diagram, um, comparing on a scale of one to 10, how much I actually understand what Venn diagrams are. Um, there you go there. Uh, also, how much I understand what Venn diagrams are. Um, I mean, what scale of one to 10 means, it's a zero. Um, good one, Josh, you fucked that up. Uh, next one's also a bar graph about what makes up a hippie. So we've got uh, love, which is 35%, because they love love. Uh, that's matched equally by patchouli. <laughs> uh, they're 15% naivety, because they, they think they can change the world through hacky sack. And then 15% uh, righteousness, for the same reasons. And then you've got other, which is 0%, which is like um, sensible footwear, uh, good taste in music, um, the ability to put a scarf on a dog. Um, <laughs> I know that one's not as strong as the other ones, but it probably works better when it's a, like when it's a pie chart, and then you can really see where all the pieces get put in. Like, uh, yeah. And give the give the speech to the year ten leavers at my old high school. Because some, somehow they thought that I had made it. Um, so, I'm going to do this. So, this is the speech that I gave. Like, I'm going to do this. Um, and this is what I gave. I broke a stool. What are you going to do? Um, so, this is the speech I gave. And uh, I'm going to do it word for word. I'm not going to make any of it up. Oh, it's easy. Uh, so, imagine that you guys are uh, year 10 leavers. And then before you leave, I come on, on stage and I give you a speech. So, this is the speech word for word. Okay, here we go. Good morning, students and staff, parents and friends, grandparents and aunties who don't have any children of their own. <laughs> Many of you here today will not know who I am. You're probably sitting there thinking, who is that good looking boy up on stage with the boyish good looks of a good looking boy? <laughs> the magnetic charm of a metal bracelet and the brooding intensity of a basset hound. But a basset hound with the eyes of Bill Murray. The good Bill Murray too, not the, the lost in translation one, not, not the stripes Bill Murray, the good one. <laughs> well I'm here to tell you that I'm one of you, just with slightly tighter trousers and a lesbian's haircut. <laughs> but I'm more than just a haircut and trousers. And if you spent your Saturday nights at home, alone, googling Josh Earl like I do, you too would know a great deal about the enigma that is Josh Earl. <laughs> so, like piglets feeding from their mother, Suckle on to my teats of knowledge as I express the cold, hard truth of a little thing I like to call life. I look out to see the young innocent faces before me. Some of you never worked a day in your life. Some of you barely raised a sweat. And while Parkland's High School does its best to educate you, to nurture you, to protect you, a school with the motto, Parkland's High School, bring a pen, can only do so much. <laughs> I graduated from here 12 years ago when the guest speakers were people of note. I remember for my own graduation ceremony, we had the Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, the cyclist, Mr. Tim O'Shaughnessy, who a mere three months after speaking to us was stripped of his medals due to a doping scandal. <laughs> Can you imagine how embarrassed you'd be to be an athlete on drugs and suddenly come third at the Commonwealth Games? <laughs> And let's not take anything away from our PE teachers. No, 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 no. Some of the finest men and women to have ever chosen a career where they get to wear shorts and yell on small children. I remember my own PE teacher, Mr. Dougal Skeggs. <laughs> That's right, his name was Dougal Skeggs. And he filled with all kinds of wisdom. At the time he said to me, he said, Josh, there's no I in team, but there is one in winning. <laughs> When I pointed out there's actually two eyes in winning, sir, he said, yeah, no, that's got two eyes. Me, and they're watching you do 20 push-ups, smart ass. <laughs> These are the types of men and women that I don't teach anymore. And more for them. I've tried contacting Dougal, but Dougal is not on Facebook. I then Googled Dougal, but that was frugal, because Dougal is not on Google. I know that last, that last sentence makes me sound like a Dutch snoop dog, but as my nan always said, Josh, she said it's... 
It's far better to sound like a Dutch Snoop Dogg than no Snoop Dogg at all. <laughs> she wasn't well. <laughs> I'm now going to speak to you kids in a language that you'll understand. A language that my generation invented. We invented this language. It's called the language of rock and roll. Which was invented when two brothers named Gallagher from the small American town of Manchester, England strapped on guitars, added a bass and created a style of music that no one had ever heard in their life before. <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> so this song is called Kiss the Dad Got Easy, Kiss the Dad Got Sweet. It sounds exactly like this. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm gonna rock. In my day, we had a little thing called dial-up, and it was character building. Because if you wanted to download a document, you must have really, really wanted that document. I even had horror stories, some larger files, spreadsheets for instance, taking up to three minutes to open. No one, not even your worst enemy, should have to wait three minutes for a spreadsheet. And in my day, we didn't have things such as DVDs, oh no, no, no. We had something called a video cassette tape. And when you had to take that back to the video store, you had to rewind it. Because if you didn't rewind it, the man who worked at the video store, he would rewind it for you. And say you wanted to watch something on TV, we had to actually wait for it to be shown on TV first. Can you fathom that being left at the mercy of TV executives on what we could watch and when we could watch it? Today, I've got an easy little thing out of it. Today, I've got a sweet kid. Today, I've got an easy little kid. Today, I've got a sweet kid. And so you had to sign for school, like an essay on the first week, for example. We couldn't just look that up on Wikipedia. Oh, no, no, no. We had something you might have read about in history books called history books. <laughs> or if you were really lucky, you had it Carter. And you had to load that from a disc. And that could take minutes. Even longer if your little brother didn't put it back in the right case. I mean, how hard is it, Brenton, to put the Pearl Jam CD back in the Pearl Jam case? And not in the Hootie and the Blowfish case, which already has the Counting Crow CD in it. <laughs> These were the bands we had to listen to, people. And it was dark days indeed. <laughs> and I see you guys at gigs taking photos and reminiscing automatically. We didn't have that luxury. If we wanted to see our photos, we had to make a special trip to the chemist, wait an hour, and then see the results. <laughs> but, but Uncle Josh, how did you know if the photos were any good or not? We did it. We had no idea. We didn't know that our holiday to Noosa was going to come back blurry. We didn't know that our 21st birthday was overexposed. That's right, kids. Overexposed. Who wants to sing? Let's sing more. Okay, here we go. Do you want to sing? Let's go. Kids today, you've got to sing. Kids today, you've got to sing. Kids today, you've got to sing. Rollerblades. So when you kids bring back the 90s, don't just remember the flannel and the ripped jeans. Remember the rollerblades and the millions upon millions of people who scum their wrists because they didn't know how to stop. <laughs> Why was it so hard to stop on rollerblades? Why was it so hard to stop? Kids today, you've got it easy. Kids today, you've got it sweet. Kids today, you've got it easy. Kids today, you've got it. And I know you can got your own problems like. You've got problems like the global warming and, and the credit crunch. Problems that my generation actually contributed to. And, and, and girls have taken a step backwards by allowing sexist old men to populate this idea that raunch culture is somehow empowering when it's not. Don't blame them. If you've got a daughter, don't let her leave the house with tracksuit pants and riding on her ass. Just don't do it. And violence at nights are want all time high. I mean, we've always had drunken idiots, but now we've got a whole generation who lives to write themselves off and they care about the damage they're doing to themselves or to other people. But, at least you didn't have to wear happy pants. At least you didn't live in a time where people impersonated Steve Urkel at you. At least you didn't live in a time where hair products don't do one of two things. Make your hair really stiff or make your hair really slimy. In my day, men couldn't use hair conditioner. And my hair was always fluffy. Kids today, I've got an easy Kids today, I've got a sweet. Kids today, I've got an easy Kids today, I've got a Kids today, I've got an easy Kids today, got to sleep. Kids today, got to be sleep. Kids today, got to be sleep. Kids, I'm 
Thanks, bye.